and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name is Josh and in today's video we're going to be painting up a Primaris Tech Marine. Pickle Jar! Pickle Jar! Miniatures! Excellent! Hi guys and welcome back to another video here on the Pickle Jar. Just want to say before we get started, if you are enjoying the content we're putting out here on the Pickle Jar, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. And if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the content coming out in the future. I've been slowly growing my Salamander Force for just over a year now and I thought with all the new releases coming out recently that it was about time that my small army got a little bit of backup from the Mechanicum. The new Primaris Tech Marine that came out really stood out to me amongst all the other miniatures and I knew instantly that I needed to have one in my army. It'd make a nice change to paint some red power armour and it'd really stand out in my force of green salamanders. Now, one of the members of our moderation team, the Lurkies Legion, actually sent me this miniature over so I didn't have to buy it myself, so Mr Normski, you are a absolute legend and a top guy. I started off by priming the miniature in Chaos Black, and then once that had dried, I started painting. Now, I was eager to get the red done on this guy, as it's one of my favourite colours to paint. I also like to get the biggest areas on the model painted up first, and then work my way through the details, getting smaller and smaller as I go. I find that this way I make less mistakes, and I see more of the miniature finished in a smaller amount of time, which then gives me the extra drive that I need to carry on working through the details, as it's not usually long after that, when the model all comes together and looks fantastic. For the base layer, I'm using Doombull Brown. I didn't want to start off too dark, as I wanted a nice, rich red, so that it doesn't stand out too much from my bright salamander scheme. So so Doombull Brown was a great choice. I went over all the armour with a couple of thin down coats to make sure that I'd got a nice even finish that I could work up from. Once the base coat was on, I went over with a watered down mix of Doombull Brown and Mephiston Red. Now depending on what it is that I'm working on, depends on how much time I spend on certain things. When I'm working on the rank and file guys for my own collection, I do a nice enough job, but I definitely cut down on things where I can. For this guy, however, I was happy to spend a little bit of extra time adding a few extra layers to make sure I got a nice finish in the end. Once this layer was on, I took Mephiston Red by itself and watered this down once again and proceeded to add my first highlight layer. Now for this part I was undecided as to how bright I was wanting to go with the armour. Initially I'd started off with the intention of going a little bit darker, but then I decided that it would stand out too much from the bright green armour of my salamanders, so I decided rather than using this as a highlight layer I would add it on to be another layer on the armour fully and then the next layer would be the highlight layer. I was undecided at this point how bright I wanted to go with the highlights. I knew there would be a couple of bright green areas on the model and that the base would have some lava on it. So in the end, I decided to stick with a final edge highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet for the red. I could have probably pushed it up to orange in some areas, but I'm happy with the result that I've got. That's the great thing about looking at your work once it's done. You can always look at things and pick things to change and improve in the future. To emphasise the contrast in the red armour, I took Agrax Earthshade and slowly worked my way around the recesses and applied this in very deliberate areas. I was careful to not apply this on any of the flat areas or to let it pull too much and once it had dried it was time to move on to some of the details. I started off by adding some green to the model and this guy is going to be part of my salamander force so I wanted him to be flying the chapter colours. And to do this, I took some inspiration from the box art. I decided to paint the right knee pad and the left shoulder pad in the chapter colours. To do this, I started with a base coat of warpstone glue. I had to go over this a couple of times to get a nice even finish, watering down my paint to make sure that I didn't add any extra texture when I was applying the brush strokes. Once that base coat was on, I thinned down some moot green and highlighted the top of the knee pad and the edge of the trim on the shoulder pad. I didn't actually get any footage of me doing this highlight layer because I think I was so into painting I forgot to press record. Whoops. From here I started to add in the smaller details like the various pipes and tubes and cables that are on and around the model. 
I used Lead Belcher as a base for all the metallic areas, painting this onto things like the Dr. Octopus arms on his back, and then lightly dry brushing it onto the various mechanical things on his back. I mix things up a bit by changing between Lead Belcher, Rune Lord Brass and Canaptic Alloy to give subtle differences in the metallics, and then I washed over all the metallic areas using a heavily watered down Cryptek armor shade. I applied some neat Cryptek armor shade to a couple of spots as well, just to add some grime and dirt to the metallic areas. For the gold on the shoulder trim and a couple of the other details, I based in Balthazar gold and then feathered on Retributor armor to some areas that I wanted to highlight, going back over these again with an Eva lighter application of Stonehose silver to really brighten them up. Now, most of the model is painted at this point and it was time to work on the weapons. I decided that I couldn't let a fantastic looking power axe like this go to waste without putting some sort of fire, flame, bright power weapon effects on it. So I started by basing the blade in Ulthman Grey and then proceeded to use a variant of my Molten Sword technique, working in reverse so that the edge is bright white and the centre is the sort of Molten Red and Brown. If you want to check out that tutorial, there will be a link in the top right hand corner right about now. With the model all done, I finished off the base, added a little bit of lava around the edge, and here he is, all finished. I'm really happy with the result I managed to get here. There's always things that I'm going to want to improve on when I'm looking back at any miniatures that I've painted. And it's important to do this so that you can continue to grow as a miniature painter, but it's also important to recognize what you got right on a project and to make sure that you're happy with the end result. So there you go guys, that is how I painted my Primaris Tech Marine for my ever-growing Salamanders Force. How did you paint yours? Did you stick with the traditional red of Mars or did you paint it up in your own chapter colours? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did be sure to leave a like down below and if you're brand new to the channel make sure to hit subscribe for more content in the future. If you want to help support the channel you can do so by visiting either our merch store or donating directly to the channel, the links for both of which are down below in the description. And if you want to see more of me I live stream here on the Pickle Jar every Wednesday evening and over on the Chilling Wargamers channel with Spud and Elston on Thursdays at 8pm. That's all from me guys, I'll see you next week with another video.